Now I have to switch to a totally different division and uh, you're very analytical when you break these down. You're a true, not just a, just a boxer, but okay. a true you know, fan of the sport. Thanks, man. So we moved to the heavyweight division. It's, it's, it's oh, also yeah. a four-headed yeah. dragon there. Um, Andy Ruiz um, and Anthony Joshua, we talked a little bit on the side about it, but can, can we get your breakdown on how you think the rematch is going to go? Um, I would have to say, I think that Andy Ruiz, if I had to make a prediction, I think Andy Ruiz takes the win again. Mainly because he's got a lot less to lose now than Anthony Joshua. And he knows that he can take uh, AJ's best shots. If you notice, he got, even in the shot he got dropped, that was a very, very clean shot he got dropped in. He got back up, he shook it off, and he got back to work and ended up uh, dropping AJ how many times. And a lot of the shots that he dropped him with were coming off of shots he was getting hit with. Because every time Anthony Joshua decided that he wanted to let his hands go and get something done, he got, he, even if he landed a shot, he'd get countered with something big and get hurt. So what that does is now Andy Ruiz knows I can take his best shot and he definitely can't take my best shot. So that's a very dangerous person now. And I feel like Anthony Joshua knows this way too well. Um, Anthony Joshua claims there was absolutely nothing wrong in the first fight with his physical body and with his mental state. And he said it over and over again, despite how many rumors have come out about you know where he was at in that fight mentally. If there really was nothing wrong in that first fight, he's got a real problem in the second fight. Because I think Andy Ruiz is gonna come in even better and more confident. Mm. The first fight, he came in a little shell shy. Like, you're in there against a giant of a man, you know? Andy Ruiz getting in there, he's the heavy underdog. You gotta imagine that he was kinda like, man, I got a, a beast in, in, in there next to me and I gotta go in there and, and, and try to do my best. But you wonder where his confidence was going into that fight. Now he's got all the confidence in the world. Like, you got a problem now. You know? so, that's what I think about that fight. Now the other half of the four-headed dragon, Wilder versus Fury, the rematch, if they get past their opponents, um, February 22nd, I believe, in Vegas. Yeah. Who yeah. do you have winning that? That's a highly contested, controversial fight. Fury won a majority of the rounds in many eyes, but Wilder had the equalizer, dropped him not once, but twice. Some people thought he just wasn't even going to get up from that point. So. In an alternate universe with a different referee, that fight would have been Deontay Wilder got a 12th round knockout. And it would have been one of the most legendary things in the world. Uh, Tyson Fury says that like history was robbed of him, you know, for the greatest comeback ever or whatever. Well, you can say the same thing about Wilder because nine refs out of 10 would have called that fight after he got dropped. Nine refs out of 10. That knockdown, the way he hit his head, that man looked completely lifeless, you know? Completely. So nine refs out of 10 would have stopped that fight. He should think, I mean, he probably does every night, but thank God that, you know, he had Jack Reese in there that night because uh, Jack made the right call and let him get up, you know, and gave him an opportunity. Who knows where we'd be at in the heavyweight division if, you know, tight, if, if Wilder knocked him out that night and he called the fight. With that being said, I think that Wilder will win the next fight, uh, being that, uh, but at the same time, you got Tyson Fury who's only getting sharper and more active because he had only had a couple fights before he even got in the ring with Wilder, so it's a hard one. But I think Wilder will know to go in there and work the body a little bit more and not reach in with his punches so much. He was going for the kill in that first fight, and by the end of the fight, and I've heard him allude to this after that too, but by the end of the fight, he was working from the body to the head, and that was all the difference, you know? The body was wide open, completely wide open. I think he knows that, and I think he'll go in there and do that, and put those strong right hands down to the body more in the second fight, and it'll work, the, the shots will come up to the head. With Wilder, it only takes one shot. It's hard to go off a man that literally, he's got the most power I've ever seen in my life. Like, if he hits you, you will go down. And it's hard to bet against somebody who has t 12 rounds to do that every fight, you know? So if you had Andy versus Wilder, seeing that if you picked Andy to beat Joshua and Wilder to get past Fury, who will win that fight amongst those two heavyweight giants? Wilder and uh, Ruiz? Yes. Uh, I, I, Wilder will still, I think, take that fight. I think, <laughs> but man, if, if Ruiz wins this next fight though, he's got a real uh, argument that he'll beat Deontay Wilder too, because 
he knows how to get on the inside. He knew, knows how to use that, you know, shorter height. But at the same time, Wilder has that right hand thrown at that lower target. You saw what happened with Stavern. Not saying that Ruiz is the level fighter that Stavern is. I think he's a twice the fighter that Stavern is. But he's still kind of the same stature. And that right hand has got a lot of leverage and momentum to throw that right hand at a shorter target. So we'll see.